Morning all. I'm just this week. I'm going to go through all the uh, self-test questions that were um, part of the notes, and I think I gave you extra ones as well. I can't remember, but anyway, whatever self-test questions I, I gave you, I'll certainly outline the solutions. I won't plow through a detailed uh, solution in each case, or even you know work out full calculations. Um, so on each one, I'll just make a short little um, screencast because I think they they work better on the brain. <laughs> we actually. Uh, see something worked out rather than having it typed out. Um, so the first one there was how how would you measure the resistance of a membrane? And it really stems from this equation, which says that the flux through, we're talking about dead end filtration here, but actually this works for cross flow or tangential filtration as well. Uh, measuring resistance of the membrane is, is one of the first things that uh, you might do. Um, particularly if you're reusing your membranes in research where you really want to start with the membrane in the same condition um, <clears throat> oh, for each experiment you do. And I can remember doing my PhD just been driven mental trying to get my membranes back to the original state so I used to spend so much time hanging around cleaning membranes uh, to get the, the same ORM value as I had in the previous um, experiment because if you don't do that then your results just are kind of random and uh, incredibly infuriating. Anyway so what I want to do is just talk you know two or three minutes on this and um, so if this is our governing equation for filtration in general and this was our kind of resistance to flow model where the flux through the membrane and remember the flux is the flow rate per unit area is equal to the pressure drop across the, the membrane divided by the fluid viscosity which is something you can measure with a, a viscometer divided by the membrane resistance and uh, plus the cake resistance. So, I mean, the clue to answering this is just to remember what that, you know, if you just filter pure water, you'll have no cake resistance. So RC will go to zero. So basically you're, you have this equation as your flux equation for flow of water through a membrane. So J is delta P over mu R M. That's your equation for, for pure water going through your membrane. So the, the trick here is that if you measure the flux at different pressures, flux of water that is, and actually have a little picture of the apparatus we use in our third year labs. Um, this is our filter cell. So this is the top of it. And here this is connected to a nitrogen cylinder actually. And this is the bit, this is our, an O-ring and this is the actual uh, microfilter that we would typically use might be 0.22 microns or 0.45 micron pore size. This is actually some dried yeast that we use and we kind of resuspend that in water and use it as our model suspension. But essentially all you do is you, you fill this up with, with water, set the pressure on your cylinder and out here then you measure the flux. And you can do that over various pressures. We just generally pick one pressure because of, of time. Uh, considerations, but it's good practice to do a number of different pressures um, and then go to our flux equation. And suppose we got data like this, we varied four different pressures and we got four different fluxes. Don't worry about the units here, we'd have to convert all our units and everything properly, we'd have to convert pressure to pascals and stuff like that. So, so what this is predicting is that if we plot flux against pressure, so pressure on the x-axis, flux on the y-axis. This prediction or this equation predicts that we should get a straight line. And if we measure the slope, then the slope is equal to one over mu or m. That's just like y equal to mx. So m, the slope is just one over mu or m. And if we know the viscosity, which is generally pretty much the same as water, so we can look it up, then we can work out what the membrane is. So. So that would so what we typically do is do that. Um, so we got our thing there and a trend line, a linear trend line, and we'd usually want to we'd need the slope, so the display equation and the R squared. So so there's our slope. Now we'd have to do a little bit of modification of the units here, as I said. So that would this. 0 0.005 is 1 over mu times Rm, so we can work out our Rm. So we have a perfect correlation basically because I made that, that data up. <laughs> so, but in fact, generally, these are filtration experiments are actually, as I was saying, it's remarkable how 
how much they actually do agree with, with the data. And certainly an experiment with water where you're just here, we have our flux and here we have our pressure. Just get getting the slope, it, it inevitably gives you a nice straight line. So that's all that's required to measure the membrane resistance. Just measure a flow and a pressure at a few different pressures and get the slope.